so I got this pretty girl here. Ooh. It's mud. Oh. Anyways, I just bought these tracks for my skid steer, as you can see in that quick frame there. I'll show you more about that in a second. Um, I just bought these tracks. And these tracks here, I was never happy with the traction that I got from these. They just kind of would fill with mud or snow, and then you had no traction. So... These, uh, you know, I got them. I got them for free when I not got them for free. I hadn't bought the machine, and they gave me these as a replacement because the old tracks were in pretty sad shape. So they were not the Bridgestone tracks that were originally with the machine. These are an aftermarket. Now, I don't know who made them or what, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, talk to the guys at Summit, and these are Summit tracks. Uh, Summit makes these tracks or has a company make them specifically for the the OEM. They're basically direct OEM replacements. They're not they're made to OEM spec. These ones here are obviously not. And I, I told him what had happened and he was like, Yeah, well that's kinda normal. He says what happens is with these Chinese companies that produce these tracks, he says they're cheap. He says that what they'll do is the this is he called them threads but it's basically cables he says what they'll do is they won't have a continuous cable all the way around the track but they'll overlap the cables over top of one another and then form them in the rubber gum and the steel and there you go when the when the overlapping parts of the cable start to work like this back and forth every time it goes around it breaks it apart and this is what you end up with uh, a split track. Now this track has got a hell of a curve to it. It isn't far from being completely junk. Uh, it's, it is junk. It is pretty much complete junk. It's just I haven't, you know, I can't use the skid steer and you wouldn't believe how often I use this machine on this farm. Every day this track, this track skid steer works. A track loader. I shouldn't call it a track skid steer. Um, but anyway, uh, the new tracks obviously have a different tread design. These are called the multi-bar. Um, they're supposed to be a higher traction tread. They will ride smoother, according to them, and uh, they will just work really well in mud and snow. Now, I'm just hoping that the pads hold up like they're supposed to. I'm sure it'll wear down here pretty quickly, and then this is a deeper groove, so it's got a shallow and a deep one. But I do have a regrooving tool, so if, if this one here gets flattened out, then I can just run the regrooving tool over it, if that's the case. But I don't expect it to happen anytime soon, because these tracks were put on in 2011. And we're at 17 now, so what's that, six years? So, not too bad for a set of tracks, I guess. Um, the one weak part about this machine, and it's really simple, uh, it's a simple cure to a complex problem. Uh, the problem was always these hubs. When, when you're dealing with CT332, anybody knows that those hubs, anybody that's run these things knows that these hubs are, are an issue as far as... Um, as far as uh, reliability. So, what do you do with these things if you have an unreliable hub? The best thing to do is to actually change the oil all the time. And I do. I'm pretty regular about changing that oil. And, uh, of course, it's a little bit dirty now because I haven't run a pressure washer over it in a while. Maybe Joe will get here today and we can do that. But, um, yeah, we're going to change the oil in that. And I always use a very good gear oil. This is synthetic extreme pressure lubricant, which is what you want to use in there. One quart will do both sides. Um, they require in the operator's manual a little more than a half a quart, but a half a quart in each side is more than sufficient. It's been running that way ever since I bought this thing in the early spring of, two, well actually I think it was winter of 2011 and by fall 2011 is when I put those tracks on. So I don't usually use this. I've used this over the years a couple of times but I've been using Valvoline 7590 or 75140. I think I got a quart of it here. Yes I do. But the thing I don't like about it is it is a uh, this is it. It's for limited slip so there's some I don't know what they put in there, but it's a stiction thing or whatever. Extreme high. But this is normally what I'll use in there. And uh, it has worked very good. Full synthetic. It has worked very good in there. So right now, uh, we got a whole bunch of things going on, as you can see. 
the stack wagon's got a bearing out, so we got new seals and bearings. Timothy went for bearings, and uh, yeah, so that's going to be repaired a little bit and later and this one here I'm going to tackle right now just because I have to I just need to get this job done okay so I've sped this thing up uh, by twice as fast because it's kind of monotonous to sit back and watch me remove the grease from the grease cylinder that is in this track system if you've never watched or no, have never seen a track be tensioned before um, I think most manufacturers do it this way now, uh, and that is to use a grease cylinder. Some, maybe the new, the newer styles are done automatically through hydraulics, through hydraulic systems. And there is a specific tension and a, a, uh, a procedure on how to get this track tensioned right. Uh, I don't like fully tensioning a track when it's right brand new I did that the last time I tensioned it what I thought was correctly and the belt or the track actually didn't loosen it tightened and created a lot of trouble for me uh, I actually took out one of the idlers in the back of the uh, the back of the track system one of the two big ones and it was at the back of the track so I've decided when you see me put the new one on you'll see that it is slightly loose but I'll show you that procedure and explain that as I go through it. But the hard part here is to actually get the grease out of this cylinder. So there is a plug that has a grease zerk, Z-E-R-K, not Z-E-R-T like some people would like to call them, but they're a zerk with a K uh, in it. And all you do is you get yourself a 7 8 inch socket, you remove that whole plug assembly, uh, it's almost like an injector. It's got holes in it and stuff, but it's kind of cool. And uh, you just remove that, and then uh, you can do what I've done here, and which is block up the ass end of the skid steer, and then take the front end of the skid steer or the bucket side of it, put a bunch of blocks underneath it, and raise it up, or curl the bucket down. But I had the spikes on this time, <clears throat> so it wasn't as easy as it could have been if I'd have just had the bucket on. And then it's just simple. It takes a couple of people, uh, one in the cab, to turn the track and actually derail the uh, the track. So the other guys there, like me, that you're seeing me do this, Teresa's inside the cab. And uh, all she's doing is turning the thing. It's hard to hear, so communication is a little bit um, not so good here. Uh, I had to go back and forth and explain to her what she needed to continue to do rather than what she thought I was saying for her to do. And as you can see, it just flops off of there. Now that is the easy spot, the easy part, because this belt, as they call them, or track, has been worn to the point where it's actually uh, very flexible. It's broken and it is stretched and it was easy to take off. So until the next clip First thing you want to do, here we go. It doesn't, I don't know, I don't think it does. But I would say, there's the side there. I want to put it on this way because the size of the thing on this track machine was to the outside. Now, I'm the one to put it on, so I don't know if that makes a difference or not. Okay. Huh? I want to center it because I want to cut that string. She's going to flop like a flop. Mm. Is that what you're doing? She's going to flop like a flop. That's what I'm doing. Okay. You got full coverage on that? Boom. Yeah. Ah, you're a little bit shorter on this side. Yeah, and that's the side I got to get on first. Okay, so you see we cut that thing apart. It's just held on by a very tough nylon band. 
Um, this track probably weighs somewhere around 400 pounds or more. It's freaking heavy. Uh, and you just kind of got to manhandle it unless you've got a little crane or, uh, you know, something. But I had the stack wagon in the way and I could not use my chain hoist uh, because I actually did this outside. And as you can see, the ground is kind of wet and it was slippery and what a pain in the ass it was. But we had had rain and this skid steer was out of commission for a couple, three weeks and it was quite annoying to say the least, but, uh, it rained. So I figured it was a good time to go buy a new set of tracks. And then that's what we did. So to put these things on, you actually, it takes a, it takes a little bit of, uh, patience and, uh, determination. And as you could see, my skid steer fell off the blocks and that became a real nightmare because how do you get the thing jacked back up? Well, it wasn't easy, I could tell you that. And, of course, I'm struggling. I got Teresa in the cab, and uh, this thing is down on the new track, and it's just kind of pissing me off. But I do have... Oh, see how it moved? And that made it worse, because then I couldn't get the jack under it, so we had to do some other finagling, and then finally, finally, I was able to get the jack under there to lift the machine up and... Uh, it should be coming up right about now. Um, the best thing to do is to get a good heavy block of oak and put it under the, the side rail, which is very thick, like half inch plate steel that they welded this whole body of this machine together with. Uh, get it on there so that it can't crush and it can't slip out and it can't move. And then you can get back to work on, you know, getting this thing back together. Uh, and it is, it's, it's not light and it's awkward. And pretty soon you're going to see me start to spray fluid film, which was a gift from a, a subscriber who stopped by, gave me a whole case of it. His name was Larry. And, uh, I appreciate that, Larry. Um, anyway, the, uh, this, this track is rubber and it's grippy. Uh, I say grippy, it, it just, it will not slide over steel. So there I go with the fluid film, which gives it a nice slippery surface. And no, it does not have a negative impact on the rubber like 99% of people would love to think that it did. So now you're going to see, I put the injector in or the grease zerk back in and I've got my lock and lube uh, bucket pump there. And let me tell you, you can see how that thing has tightened and tensioned it up. Um, the procedure is that the droop in the track should not be any more or any less than three inches uh, from the idler or the roller wheels on the bottom of the track system. So when you put a new track on, make sure it's like three inches, three to four inches, and uh, you know, and that's that. So tomorrow you'll see me do the other half. Thanks for watching.